kids happy independence day today is nigeria's birthday i'm sure you guys have had your birthdays earlier in the year or the birthdays are coming up but today is nigeria's birthday can you guess how old we are let me see let me see if you guess 61 you are absolutely correct now we have we're going to have an amazing time today we have so many things lined up but first let me introduce the super kids in the studio with me on my right is super Oge, and on my left is super natasha now, what's going to happen is we're all going to watch the next episode together. It's an episode of King Solomon and Chris. We learned something about wisdom, but I'm not going to tell you too much. Just let's watch it. And then when we come back, we'll talk about it. Grab your popcorn, grab your drink, and we'll see you after the episode. See you soon. seem small, but this device is the cornerstone of my life's work. Wow, so that one little invention makes most of your other inventions possible, Professor Quantum? That's correct, Joy. When I invented the Magnetic Gyro Capacitor Self-Sustaining Energy Stabilizing System... Or MEGSIS for short. <laughs> uh, <laughs> exactly. 
That's when I knew I had a break. Professor Quantum, thank you for letting our science class get a sneak peek. Why, just spending these fleeting moments in your presence is a lifelong dream come true. <laughs> and I'm only 12. I uh, appreciate your classmates helping with this setup. <laughs> That's some grip. Hey, Dad, where do you want the multimeter? Oh, I can take that, Chris. You know, I think I am more proud of you than anyone I have ever met. Well, I'm proud of you too, Carson. Valley View's top science honors student and president of the Future Inventors Club, <laughs> Sterling Credentials. Oh, yeah. he's a hugger. <laughs> My, <laughs> how time flies. Actually, time is an immaterial relative concept and cannot fly. Uh, but you know that, don't you, Professor? Yes. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I, I get it. It's a metaphor. Son, I need you to be in charge of the final preparations. Really? Guests will arrive in 15 minutes. Make sure the Maxis looks perfect for the exhibition. Yeah, I'm in charge. Oh, brother. Uh, Mr. In Charge, fingerprint smudges? Yeah, good, Gizmo. You make sure everything is nice and polished. <laughs> it's my responsibility to make sure everything for this exhibition of his life's work is looking and running perfectly. <laughs> I am so on this. Okay, people, we've got less than 15 minutes. Make sure everything looks great. And remember to... Okay. That lightning strike was so close that its electromagnetic pulse fried my... <laughs> ...turning me into a giant electromagnet. <sighs> I should be fine as long as I don't become startled or... <laughs> the Magsis! It's missing! <gasps> oh no! Everybody search! We've got to find it! Yes, check for fingerprints. Go! <laughs> Joy, what am I gonna do? I gotta find out who took it. All right, all right. Let's see. Think, Chris, think. Could've been Kevin. Nah, squeaky shoes. Would've hurt him. Kaylee was close enough. Uh, she's always getting calls. And I would've heard that ringtone. Chris, Chris, you were right. You found fingerprints? Yes, and I polished them up so you can't tell they were ever there. Kids, no! Kiz, you weren't supposed to clean the fingerprints. You were supposed to collect them for evidence. Yes, that does make more sense. Uh, oh, the exhibit opens in just a few minutes. What am I going to do? Superbook! Wait, Superbook, no! I've got to find out who took the mag! <laughs> I am taking you to meet a man who sought wisdom and guidance from God. Giz, get, get a, a reading, reading on where we are. I am on it. The year is approximately 970 BC. We have been deposited somewhere between the ancient cities of Jerusalem and Gibeon. Uh-oh, I see soldiers. And they do not look friendly. Quick, behind these bushes. Oh. Whoa, easy. What's got you so startled? Hmm, probably smells a jackal. They are all over these hills. <laughs> get away, get away, get away, get away. Jeez. Darn it. Ah! What? What is it? What? Gizmo! Hi. Looks 
Just like I found your jackals. <laughs> what were you doing in the bushes? Are you a thief? Uh, no, in fact, I'm trying to catch a thief, uh, believe it or not. And we just they got scared. They hardly when... look dangerous. But King Solomon, they Hiding were... from the big men with scary weapons. I would have done the same thing. Let them go. That is right. You heard the men. I am not a jackal. Hm. You don't really think there are jackals out here, do you? <laughs> Uh, hold on a minute. Uh, excuse me. Uh, King Solomon, we're kind of new around here. Right? And if there are indeed jackals and other dangerous creatures around... We wondered if we could ride along with you, just to the nearest town. I am headed to Jerusalem. You can ride with my soldiers. Thanks oh, right. Woohoo! Uh, we should thank you for the ride. It's not every day one gets a lift from the king. Yes, but next time I will call dibs on the king's chariot. <laughs> Chris, did you say you were trying to catch a thief? Yeah, my father trusted me with a prized possession of his, and I let him down. I might understand your situation better than you think, Chris. My father was king before I was, King David. And he entrusted me with all of Israel. I can't even lead a science class. <sighs> can't imagine having to lead an entire nation. How did you manage all that responsibility? I think of advice my father gave me. My son, I am going where everyone on Earth must someday go. Take courage and be a man. Observe the requirements of the Lord your God and follow all his ways. Keep the decrees, commands, regulations, and laws written in the law of Moses so that you will be successful in all you do and wherever you go. If you do this, then the Lord will keep the promise he made to me. He told me, if your descendants live as they should and follow me faithfully with all their heart and soul, one of them will always sit on the throne of Israel. So, no matter how difficult the task, as long as I obey the Lord, he will see that I succeed. You took over after your father died, but my father's waiting for me back home. And when he finds out how badly I messed up, Huh, I'm done for. Chris, it has been a long journey. Why don't you and your friends come to the palace as my guests? Chris, why don't you try to eat something? This food's delicious. I can't. Somebody in the museum had to have stolen the Magsis. That means it's probably still there somewhere. Now, I placed everyone exactly where they were right before the power went out. Joy, you and I were here. Carson started walking this way past Fabiola and Juan. Jake, Amari, and Chen were over near the... What are you doing? Oh, it is my 3D printed action figure. Equipped with the ever-popular lifelike Extendo Grip. I know what it is, Gizmo. Why are you putting it into my reenactment? Because I am not a fake. You're not a fake. I am not, and I do not want anyone thinking I am a fake. But you can use this. It is not a fake. Giz, put it away. You're thinking one of these people did take it, right? And I just need to deduce who had a motive and the best opportunity. Well, it could not have been any of them. Why not? Because they're all fruit, and some fruit didn't steal the Maxis. Get a grip, Giz. I have a grip. A lifelike extendo grip. And what are my new friends up to? Still trying to solve Chris's mystery. Hmm. Maybe that's the problem. What are you talking about? When I was younger and had been given all the responsibility of ruling over Israel, I knew I could not do it alone. So I went to one of the most important places of worship, at Gibeon, where I offered over a thousand sacrifices to the Lord. That night, God spoke to me in a dream.
Solomon. Ask for anything you want, and I will give it to you. My father, David, your servant, was honest and did what you commanded. You've made me king in my father's place, but I'm very young and know so little about being a leader. Please make me wise and teach me the difference between right and wrong. If you don't, there is no way I could rule this great nation of yours. Solomon, I'm pleased that you asked for this. You asked for wisdom to make right decisions. So I'll make you wiser than anyone who has ever lived or ever will live. I'll also give you what you didn't ask for. You'll be rich and respected as long as you live, and you'll be greater than any other king. Wisdom? But God was asking. I mean, you could have requested anything. A super long life, which is beyond your dreams. I asked for wisdom. And God will grant the same to anyone if he asks from his heart. With all your heart, you must trust the Lord and not your own judgment. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Is your trust in God, or is it in Chris? I never thought about it that way before. Maybe that means your trust is in Chris? Please, dear God, my father will be so disappointed if the exhibit doesn't open because of me. Please help me. I want to put my trust in you and not me, but... <sighs> What's the use? no witnesses to prove whose baby it is. Then there is no way King Solomon can decide. Ah, why don't we use DNA samples to determine which woman is the true biological mother? Kiss, that's a great idea. Move! Move aside! Make way, make it's way. my baby! The king will determine the baby is mine! All I need are a few hair samples to analyze, and our little mystery will be solved. Small hair sample. Won't hurt a bit. Oh, you are right. I can just use some of that for your DNA. Giz, hurry. We need that DNA analyzed. I will send them off to the lab as soon as we get home. We should have the results in six to eight weeks. Giz, no! The king is here! Oh, so do. How do you know? How do you Majesty, this woman and I live in the same house. Not long ago, my baby was born at home, and three days later, her baby was born. Nobody else was there with us. One night, while we were all asleep, she rolled over on her baby and he died. <gasps> then while I was still asleep, she got up and took my son out of my bed. She put him in her bed, and then she put her dead baby next to me. <gasps> In the morning, when I got up to feed my son, I saw that he was dead. But when I looked at him in the light, I knew he was not my son. No, he was your son. My baby is alive. 
The dead baby is yours. Mine is alive. What's Solomon going to do? Without a DNA test, there is no way to know for sure whose baby it really is. Lord, grant me wisdom. Both of you say this live baby is yours. Someone, bring me a sword! baby in half. That way each of you can have part of him. No! Put him down. Please don't kill my son. Your Majesty, I love him very much. But give him to her. Just don't kill him. <laughs> Go ahead and cut him in half. Then neither of us will have the baby. <laughs> Do not kill the child. But give him to the woman who wants him to live. For she is his mother. Him to solve that problem in a way no one else could. Superbook, come on! Dad, we've been looking all over for the Maxis. It disappeared when we lost power. Uh, I'm sorry. Chris, it was a centerpiece of the exhibition. Without it, well, I better tell the curators we're gonna have to cancel the evening and figure out who took it. Lord, give me wisdom. The Magsis would have left some DNA behind, right? Scan the display for DNA evidence. But... Mm. But Chris, Gizmo can... Uh, Professor Quantum, I think Chris has this one covered. Now, as we know... <laughs> uh, Giz, I need you to focus with me up here. Please, scan the table for DNA. Now, as I was saying, everybody's DNA is one of a kind. Identify the DNA, you identify the thief. Chris, you are correct. My DNA scan found hair and skin cells. Now all I have to do is say- Wait! Huh? I did it! You did what? It was me. I didn't steal it. I just wanted to touch a piece of history. So I picked up the Magsis when nobody was looking, and I accidentally dropped it when the lightning hit. The case cracked and I panicked. So I hit it right... <gasps> it's gone! I slid it under the table right before the power came back on. Chris, look. 
You made me admit my mistake, but I don't have the Magsis. I believe you, Carson, but then where is it? Huh? Giz, the Magsis! Chris, it must have been under the table like Carson said. But when the thunder crashed and I jumped over the... Uh, <laughs> I must have magnetized again, and the Magsis got pulled out and stuck to me without my knowing. <laughs> well, it's seen better days, but it's certainly fixable. What do you say we get this back on display and open the exhibition? Huh. Sounds like a super plan. Thanks, Chris. You did a very impressive job there, Chris. Getting Carson to step up and admit the truth. Thanks, Dad. I had an old friend give me some good advice. Well, if I am no longer needed here, I am going to check out the outer space exhibits before the crowd arrives. <laughs> Think we should tell him he just walked into the bugs and creepy crawler exhibit? Butterflies, spiders, scorpions! Ah! Ah! The space exhibit is this way. Hmm. Guess I should probably replace that circuit board as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Now, I hope you enjoyed the episode as much as we did. Um, so we're not going to waste so much time. We're just going to start talking about everything we learned. I'm sure you had the favorite part. I did. And so did Super Oge and Super Natasha. So let's start with Super Oge. What was your best part? My best part was when King Solomon asked for a sword to cut the baby in half. Why is that your best part? That's the scary part. Right. I was screaming. I was like, no! Natasha, what was your best part? My best part was when they found out the real mother of the... Right, baby. yeah, I was, ha I was really happy about that. My best part, well, my best part is before your best part, where he prayed and asked God for wisdom on how to settle the matter. And then you remember the cloud, or would I say the gold thing that came upon him? Oh, that was my best part. The next thing he says, hand me my sword. See, it's before your own bomb. My own is not the same with you. He was like <laughs> anointed with the Holy right, Spirit. Right, exactly. It was like the Holy Spirit gave him, came upon him and gave him wisdom. And then he said, hand me my sword. What was your best part? Let us know what your best part was. Just type it or, yes, type it in the comment section so that we know. Now, I have plenty questions for Oge and Natasha. Oge spied, but I'm going to ask him different questions. Let's start with Natasha. Do you have any personal story of how, where you've been in a difficult situation and how you had to ask God for wisdom? Um, I had one during my French exam. Right. Tell me about it. At first, I looked at my questions yes. and they looked easy. But I started answering them and they were hard, so I prayed and it got, and it got a little bit easier. Easy. But at the end, I got a B. You got a B? Wow, that's a good score. So yeah, you're very good in French, right? <laughs> Not that good. Not so well, like, mm, yeah, enough to get a B, right? Yeah. What about you, Super Oge? The same thing was exam. Wow, we all need wisdom in exams. So what did you do? Our 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 teachers yeah. were saying the exam were going to be easy. Yeah. The day of the exam, nothing was easy. So what did you? Everything do? was hard. So I prayed to God for, and asked Him for wisdom. And at the end of the day, I passed. You passed. Oh, that's. I think me too. If I think about it, I've had. It was an exam time too. I was wondering. Okay, mine was. What do I read? Because I didn't know what I was going to read, and I'm like, oh God, please show me what to read. And you know, I just kept reading and reading. And by the time I went to the exam hall, it was what I've read that came out in the exam. So I was like, yes, I passed the exam. So next question. How do you? Okay, what would you say wisdom is? Wisdom is the act of knowing what is right and wrong. Hmm. Super Oge, I'm suspecting this is your answer, but let me not even say anything. <laughs> I'm suspecting this answer was derived from somewhere, from somebody. Super Natasha, what would you say? Wisdom is like 
when somebody knows what to do yeah. just like in the episode we watched yeah king solomon was about to like fall out of the way he was yeah. going to do yeah. but he asked god for wisdom and, yeah. and, and god helped him yeah so he knew who was right and who was wrong just like super oge said it's the act of knowing what is right, right and, and what is wrong hmm, okay so now let's bring it home to nigeria do you guys know what's happening in nigeria yeah, yes. there's a lot of kidnapping, yeah. insecurity, poverty. So, I mean, that's that's a lot of bad things happening at the same time, right? Yeah. yeah. What would you? How would you say we now apply wisdom, Super Oge? Would you, can you say that we can ask for wisdom for God to help us in Nigeria? Yeah, we can pray for our leaders, yeah. people who need help, okay. people who have been kidnapped, okay. people who are about to be killed. Yeah. We can pray for them and ask God to grant them safe passage and pray for our leaders to give them wisdom. Wisdom, right? So, Super Natasha, even when they pray for wisdom, they, it's not enough to pray about it, right? We also yes, have to yeah. use it. Yeah. And when when you ask him, even if you haven't gotten the wisdom, yeah. thank him. Exactly. So you pray, you thank him for the wisdom, and then when you and get believe. the wisdom, believe that like you have you. the wisdom, and he'll give it to you, right? Yes. And then when we have the wisdom, we now have to use it. We have to use it wisely, wisely, like Solomon yes. did. Exactly. We have to learn to use wisdom for good, not bad. Right? Okay. So, do you, do you believe that Nigeria will become a very good country someday? Super okay? Yes. Yeah. Someday. You believe it too, Super With God's help. Right? Yes, Whoa. God has a plan for everyone. Right? What about you? Someday, Nigeria will become a better place. Better place. Okay. So, Super Natasha, if you had to tell me your dreams for Nigeria, what would it be? I'm dreaming of free education. Right. High five. I'm with you. Okay, what about you? I'm dreaming Bundy? for poverty and insecurity to end in Nigeria. To end. Okay, so elimination of poverty and insecurity. And insecurity. So we can all move around freely. Really, with Nobody's no fear. afraid. No fear of getting kidnapped. Exactly. Or and at the end of the day, it's just good wisdom that will help us to accomplish all that, right? Okay. Hmm. I hope you had fun with us. I mean, like I said, we couldn't answer all the questions because we'll sleep here. But take your time, think about it, watch the episode again and again. And we've heard from Super Oge and from Super Natasha. You need wisdom, you pray for it. You thank God for it, then you believe it. And when God gives you the wisdom, you use it wisely. Okay? Well, <sighs> that's all we have for now. The craft is up next and then... Yeah, we have a super amazing craft to do next. Don't go anywhere, okay? Wait! Before we go, we have one more thing to do. We want to say the pledge to you guys. Is that okay? All right. Wherever you are, it's time to say the pledge. On the count of three. One, two, three. I, I pledge to Nigeria, Nigeria, my country, to be faithful, loyal, and honest, to serve Nigeria with all my strength, to defend her unity, and uphold her own and green. So, so help me God. Amen. Amen. Happy Independence Day, guys. Bye. Bye. I hope you enjoyed the episode as much as I did. I am Super Michelle and this is Gizmo. I would like to say the salvation prayer with you. Yeah, Jesus, thank you for coming into my life. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for sending your son to save us all. Holy Spirit, be with us and guide us. Help us to be an example to our friends and families. Help us to live for you. Amen. If you want to talk to our auntie or an uncle, please call the number on the screen. Bye. Happy Independence Day, children. Welcome to the craft segment. My name is Super Buki, and with me is... Super Nehemiah. Happy Independence Day, children. Yay! So today's craft is going to be a picture frame. This is to remind us that no matter how, sit um, how difficult a situation is, as long as we obey the Lord, He will see us through. He will make us succeed. So... The items we'll be using for this craft, can you pass me the cardboards? Uh, cardboards, any two colors that you love. 
So I've gone ahead, you can return them now, and I've cut down to the sizes I want. I have the white background, a bigger rectangle, and then any of your choice, any color you choose to use here. Okay, so we'll start by, and then we have a passport photograph of Nehemiah here. So we're going to make it look like this one to put your passport photograph inside, hang on your door, your bedroom door, gift it to a friend, whatever you like. And we have um, adhesive. We have embellishments of different types. As we work, as we work with them, you'll notice them. You'll see what we are doing, what we're using. We have a rope to hang, a piece of any rope to hang the picture frame. I used wool here. Any kind of rope you can find, it's okay. And then our scissors, and we have our pens, our markers to work with. And then I have this circular shape to cut out this part of the, the card you are going to put your passport in. So to start now, let me let you pick any color of your choice. Uh, we're going to take green. Okay, good. So what we'll do, we're going to cut out your passport photograph. So let's just, I think it should be on top. And we'll just cut it out. You don't have to have a paper passport. You can get an original uh, photo passport. Or it could be a picture of your favorite pet, whatever you like. And we just So we're going to make this space for where the passport is going to come out. That's where this circular shape comes in. I'll put it on the back side. Okay. Can I have the barrel? Okay, let me use this. And draw out the shape. It's better to draw it on the back of your um, paper in case you make a mistake or decide to change the shape. You can make it into a square, heart shape, whatever shape you can do. And then I'm going to use the scissors to pierce through. And then you get a circular scissors. If you're going to cut a circle and start to cut. So, not to waste your time, I've gone ahead and I think this is what I cut out. So we'll just go straight to putting this together. We have our board. We have Nehemiah's passport, which we're going to stick. Is this okay? Yes. That's right. Okay, so let's stick this on first. I think we should do it like this. So in here, I put some adhesive. There's no syringe head to it. It just helps me control the flow of the adhesive. So round here, we're just going to add the adhesive and then stick this, let's see, on. Is this okay? Press it down. Good. And then we cut off the excess paper. It's okay. There you go. And then now we put it. Is this okay? Yes. Okay. So we stick this on as well. For a good position. Did you get there? Yeah. Okay, press that down.
piece of rope here. Mm. Okay, nice. We'll make a hole. Let's use this part of the scissors. Remember, whenever you're holding, going to use a scissors, especially for the younger kids, you need your an adult supervision. Let's put it right here. Is this okay? Yes. Yes. And the other here. So we'll pass this through. Let me pull the back out as I push. Okay. And the other side. Pull out. Okay. So we make our knot. I'll just make a knot at the back. You double the knot. I think this is too long. Let's shorten it. No, not too long. You like it long? Yes. Is this okay? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so that's our knot. So this is where we are now. And then we cut off excess from this place. And now for the fun part. So let's get our embellishments. We have small buttons, big buttons. Stars. Yeah. Butterflies. Yeah. Leaves. Leaves. Pom pom. Pom poms and, and flowers. Flowers, that's right. So what are we going to do? So it's all yours now. I want one big star first. Okay, so let's put it here. Is that okay? You can pop out like this. This is nice. Mm. Or here. Or at the bottom. Like under you. What do you mm. think? I want it up here. Okay, like so a star do. popping out. Okay, so the buttons, where do you want your pom-poms, your buttons? After we go glue the star with hot glue corn. Okay. So where do you want your pom-poms now? The wow. pom pom. Nice. These pom pom. I want mm -hmm. red pom pom and white pom pom. Okay, I'll just put them on the table. Oh, yeah. yes, and also some black. Okay, just put them wherever you want them and I'll glue. I'll put the glue um, on. I want this pom pom here. Pick your leaves. This pom pom here and pom pom okay. here. Okay. This weave. This weave this is a weave. It goes up here. Okay, watch your hand. Don't let this hurt you. Mm. Reminds me of Christmas. What do you think? Red? Yes. Okay. And also, this butterfly, we need leaves. Wait, why is the yellow butterfly? You want a yellow one? Yes. Okay. And this yellow butterfly will, will go on the press here. Okay. But it will not block too much of the picture. Okay, I'll do just that. Can I have the marker so we can write what we need to put there? Mm -hmm. I want to use green marker. Green on it, that'd be nice. So this is dark and this is oh. lemon. Uh, oh, green. No, it will show. Don't worry. I think it will. It will look nice. So, what are we writing on it? Can you remember? Yes. For the word gives me wisdom. For the Lord gives me wisdom. And there you have it. See, this is how to make a a pa a picture that reminds you no matter how difficult it is, the world is with you. Amen. There you have it. Have fun. God bless you all. Thank you for staying tuned. Bye.
been 